Verse number 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Please be seated. Please keep your Bibles turned to Mark chapter 10. We'll be looking at that uh, chapter tonight. Every time that we assemble in this building, we come here for a purpose. As a spiritual family, we come here to worship God, to bring honor to His name, to praise our Father. On Sundays, we remember that great gift, the greatest gift of all, and that would be Jesus on the cross. Every time we're in this building, we're here to, to be brought closer to God and, and closer to each other. But today, we've had a secondary purpose, and that is to honor the accomplishments and achievements of our graduates. This morning, this morning we talked about how that we're going to face uncertain times in the in near future. And as we go out into these uncertain times, we must uh, obey, uh, follow, and trust in Jesus. That's going to get us through the rough days that could be ahead of us in our lives. Tonight, we continue. We continue to look at what do we do in these uncertain times. And tonight, I want to issue to our graduates a challenge. In these uncertain times, be a world changer. I want to challenge you to become a world changer. Now, I want to go back a little bit back in my heyday, okay? Let's go back to my heyday. This is Lassie. And in the early episodes of Lassie, we had Lassie in, remember little Timmy? And uh, little Timmy, uh, he was always getting into trouble. He was, uh, for example, uh, falling down in the well. And what would Lassie do? Lassie would go out and uh, get somebody and come back and rescue little Timmy. Well, 10 years ago, Chevrolet, for their Super Bowl commercial, decided to do a, um, a kind of a spinoff of the Lassie story. But instead of Lassie and Timmy... It was a Chevrolet, Silverado, and Tommy. And Tommy, just like Timmy, was always getting into trouble. He, he fell into the well. He, uh, he was uh, eaten by a big whale. He got lost in the volcano. And guess what? The Silverado rescued him each and every time. For you and me, for our graduates, for all of us, the question is not, will we ever get into trouble? The question is, what will we do when we do get into trouble? Because troubles, problems will come along. You see, we all get into problems. We all get into trouble. But only some of us... Only some of us come out of those problems a better person. Only some of us come out of the ad adversity a victor. Someone who is able to change the world and not to become a victim of circumstances. I want us to change our world starting with our own community, our family our friends. And we look tonight at a man that I think just perhaps became a world changer. And he's a very unlikely man to do this. In our present uncertain times, what do we do? How about you? How about me? Let's read Mark 10 46. Now they came to Jericho. Now Jericho was uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest city on earth. Very old city. 
Herod the Great had turned it into a, somewhat of a resort palace for his family. And here Jesus comes to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho, he's now leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. There's a great multitude following Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Can you picture this in your mind? This man, his name, his name literally means son of the honored one. But he sure is not bringing a lot of honor to himself or even to his family. You see, he was blind. That meant he was, a, he was a dredge on society. He was a problem to society. And furthermore, he was a beggar. That's the worst. The worst kind of job you can have. Now, Bartimaeus did not bring honor to his family. He brought shame. But he did not let that keep him from Christ. Verse 47. And when he heard, of course he can't see, he's blind. But when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, no doubt he'd heard people talk. He'd heard the whispers. He'd heard the stories. He'd heard about the miracles. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Despite his condition, despite where he was, he was on the roadside. Okay? He's not even inside the city. He's on the roadside outside of the city of Jericho. He does not let his conditions keep him from Jesus. Verse 48, then many warned him, shh, be quiet, shh, be quiet. But he cried out the more, son of David, have mercy on me. He's pleading. He's pleading for mercy. You, you see, the, the citizens... The citizens of the, of the city, they're embarrassed over this man. Uh, he's not going to let them stop him, though. He isn't about to let anyone or anything stop him from getting close to Jesus. And here comes the first point. If you want to become a world changer, if you want to make a difference with your friends, with your family, with our community, with our world, and certainly we're going into a time we're going to be in the midst of uncertain times, then don't let anything or anyone keep you from Christ. I'm going to let you in on a big secret. You're about to leave the nest, and there's going to be a lot of people. Sometimes it's going to be your friends. Sometimes it's going to be others maybe college professors, employers, whoever, and they're going to try to pull you away from Jesus. They're going to try to change your priorities. They're going to try to influence you to the negative. Don't let anything or anyone keep you from Jesus. Now, Bartimaeus, even though the people are saying, shh, quiet, Bartimaeus, don't, don't bother the master. Don't bother the teacher. He's not going to take a no. He's not going to let anyone keep him from Jesus. Uh, I want to go back to a movie from several, several years ago, First Night. In the movie, King Arthur and Queen Guinevere are, are celebrating their wedding. And at the celebration, there's a, there's a gauntlet. It's an obstacle course, a, a somewhat deadly obstacle course. And if anyone can negotiate it and complete it, they can sit at the table with the king. People keep on failing until Lancelot 
until Lancelot takes on the gauntlet. And he is the first person, the only person, that is able to negotiate the gauntlet to the very end. He tells the king how he did it. He says this, It's not hard to know where the danger is if you watch it coming. Perhaps fear, fear, made the others who failed go back. They should have gone forward. I think that's often what we do. We end up going backwards. We uh, branch out in our lives. We go to school. We get a job. Uh, we move away or whatever. And, and instead of resting on the foundation that we've been given, the good, strong, biblical foundation, it's so easy to uh, be persuaded by those friends and other people, and we end up going back away from God. We end up backing up. We should be pressing on. Paul, Paul encouraged all of us to press on, to not retreat, not fall away. If you want to become a world changer in these uncertain times, then we cannot let anything keep us from Christ. Not friends, not college professors, bosses, or even family. We've got to stay focused on what's important. What we've got to do, we've got to trust Christ with our lives. We've got to trust Him with our lives. We must rely on the Lord to do His work in us, even when times are hard. And times can be hard. When all your friends are going to the party, but, you know, the party is not going to be a party that a Christian should be at. It's hard to say no. It's hard to resist. You think, well, mom and dad, I'm away from home, and mom and dad will never know, and it won't hurt if I just go this one time. But you know, there's things happening to that party that's just not what a Christian should be involved in. What do you got to do? You got to say no. You got to trust Jesus with your life. You must rely on the Lord. That's what blind Bart did. He saw Jesus for who Jesus really was. Even though Bartimaeus was blind, he saw things others did not see. He saw Jesus as the Messiah. He called him the son of David. Son of David. Now that's a messianic title. It's recognizing Jesus as the promised king as a deliverer of his people. More than that, more than that, Bartimaeus saw Jesus as the merciful one. He's calling on him to have mercy, and indeed, indeed, Jesus does show him mercy. Verse 49, So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise, he is calling you. He's calling you. Now Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to give his life as a ransom for many. He's got a lot of things on his mind, but our Lord is not too busy to stop for one blind beggar on the way. Isn't it wonderful to know that we have a Savior that would take time out of His busy schedule to serve the needs of this one blind beggar? What does blind Bart do now? Blind Bart throws away his own pitiful efforts at self-preservation, verse number 50, and throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. This garment here, verse 50, 
most likely was that outer garment that he would have had. That outer garment, he was usually a beggar would throw it down on the ground and they would sit on that garment and the garment would be where people would throw coins at them. And people would literally just throw coins onto the garment. When Bartimaeus, he threw away that garment, he's throwing away his livelihood. He's throwing away the way that he supports himself. Blind Bart threw away his own pitiful efforts at self-preservation and put his trust in Jesus. Look at verse 51. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Now, Jesus knew, but he wants Bartimaeus to say it out loud. So what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni. We're going to come back to that word in just a moment. Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. He called Jesus Rabboni, which means my rabbi, my teacher, my master. What's happening here? To Bartimaeus, Jesus was not just the master. He was my master. And that made all the difference in the world to him. You know, in our world today, there are a lot of people in our world who understand that Jesus is the Savior of the world. They will acknowledge that. But they have never looked to him as my Savior. Why do I say that? Because they have never put their trust in Him and they have never obeyed Him. They give Him lip service, but that's it. They have never obeyed our Lord. If you want to stop being a victim in these uncertain times and start becoming a world changer, then we must see Jesus for who He is. He is the merciful Messiah. We need to throw away the cloak of our own self-efforts and see Jesus as my master. In a word, we must trust Him. Trust Him. In the good days, in the bad days, and even in those difficult, uncertain days, we must trust Him. We must stop depending on ourselves and start depending on Jesus. We must rely solely on the one who can make a difference in our life. Charles Crow of Covington, Georgia, talks about a time that uh, he joined up with a friend of his, and uh, his friend is a pilot, had been a pilot for about 50 years, and they went on a cross-state tour of Florida. Everything went fine on the first leg of the trip, but on that second leg, problems happened. As, as Charles was sitting there in his seat, he felt the plane start shaking, and he felt that they were losing elevation, and he heard the engine start coughing and sputtering, and, and he started looking around. He started looking at those controls, and he was thinking, well, what should I do? Should I grab this? And what did I do? do? And, and he started looking out the window and said, you know, if we get so close to the ground, could I somehow maybe jump out and, and maybe survive? But then he looked at his buddy, the pilot, and the pilot was as cool as a cucumber. He was sitting there and he was turning switches and making adjustments and he was uh, moving things around and he was piloting that plane through that difficult time and they landed safe. Now here is the lesson that Charlie learned from that experience. He commented, There are times in life when I desperately want to grab control. My experience in the plane reminds me that if I take control, I will ruin or destroy my life. It's at those moments that I must resist the urge and trust the one who has seen it all before 
and who knows what he is doing. My friends, that's the only way. Any of us will ever make it through life. We must resist the urge to take control and trust Christ to steer us through the good times as well as the uncertain times. Don't, don't let anything keep you from Christ. Instead, trust Christ with your life, for that's the only way that we can be truly safe. That's the only way that we will be rescued from a life of darkness to walk in the light of Christ. Look at verse number 52. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately, that's that word that keeps on popping up here in the book of Mark. And immediately he received his sight. And what does he do? He followed. He followed Jesus on the road. Followed Jesus on the road. This story is in the book of Luke, chapter 18. It seems like also Matthew has a story that's either similar or the same story in his gospel. But the difference between Matthew, Mark, and Luke is the fact that only Mark names this beggar by name. I wonder why. Why is Mark the only one that names him by name? Now keep in mind... They, in the first century, they had a, a, a somewhat limited supply of writing materials. You know, today we can, uh, we can go on our computer and we can order a, a case of paper and have it here tomorrow. That was not the case back in the first century. Writing materials were somewhat limited. So, so people who wrote always were very conservative in the number of words they would write down. They didn't want to waste a word. They wanted to be as, as conservative as possible with the number of words to limit the amount of writing material that would be required. So why did Mark, through the inspiration of God, why did Mark name Bartimaeus by name? I can't say for sure, but I want to give you my opinion. And this is just my opinion. I think the answer may be found in the audience that Mark is going for. The book of Mark, the gospel according to Mark, is written primarily for a Roman audience. He's writing, we believe, primarily for a Roman audience. So why would he include the name if he's writing to a Roman audience? Well, let's go to another source. Let's go to a source outside of the Bible. Let's go to a writing of a very early Christian in Rome. In his writing, he talks about Bartimaeus. And he even in case there's more than one Bartimaeus. He even says, Bartimaeus, the one that Jesus healed. So he really, he, he narrows down the focus. We're pretty sure he's talking about this Bartimaeus. And in this early Christian writing, he talks about the influence of Bartimaeus on the Roman Christians. Why? Well... He did not reveal the why. Did Bartimaeus travel to Rome? Did Bartimaeus end up living in Rome? Did Bartimaeus perhaps start a ministry uh, 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 for uh, blind people to help them to understand Jesus and convert them to the Lord? We don't know. All we know is it seems that Bartimaeus had influence on the Christians in Rome. So maybe Mark, who's writing to Roman Christians, he's writing to a Roman audience, 
he mentioned somebody that they knew already. Bartimaeus. If that's the case, Bartimaeus became a world changer. We know that he followed Jesus, and usually that word follow in the book of Mark is referring to someone who's not just uh, walking behind somebody, it's, it's walking in obedience with somebody. He followed Jesus. Somehow in some way, it seemed like he became a world changer on the Christians in Rome. If a man who had spent his life begging could do something like that, what can you do? I'm excited. As you were standing up there this afternoon at our luncheon, I was thinking about all the potential that you have. All the, all the things that you can accomplish. All the wonderful things that you will see and that you will do. But the most wonderful thing that you might accomplish is not an invention. It's not a, a discovery. It, it's not a, a, a world famous achievement like that. It's being faithful to God. Helping your people around you be faithful to God. A few years ago, I was called upon to officiate a funeral of a man that uh, he had an eighth grade education. He was born with a severe handicap. And when I say a severe handicap, I mean a severe handicap. And he influenced so many people for the Lord. During that funeral service, I just said, by a show of hands, how many, how many was brought closer to God? How many people here felt a, uh, 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 an encouragement from this man who's just died? Uh, how many of us are, are better Christians because of this man? I think every hand went up. And by the way, that was a packed room. So many people came to his funeral. That's a world changer. Yeah, eighth grade education, died, he never was wealthy, you know. He had old tractors, old trucks, he never had anything new, but he was a world changer. You all can do that. If you stay faithful to God, if you encourage others around you, your spouse, your children, to, to believe and trust in God, you can be a world changer too. These uncertain times do not need to weaken us or make us hard. Rather, Christ can use the adversity to turn us into world changers if we simply get out of the way and let Him do His work in us. The next two slides you have seen before. You know me, I always end with these two slides. One is a call for you to become a Christian. Using the verses, these are all words from Jesus right here. To believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. And then the next slide is a, is a reminder that as a Christian, we can ask Him to forgive us if we have lived away from Him. If we have disappointed Him, if we have become unfaithful, He will forgive. And the church stands ready to pray with you and for you. And normally, at this moment, I'd be stepping down and John would be coming up here and leading the, what we call the invitation song. I've got one additional slide tonight. You've seen it before already. I want you to look at the eyes of this man. We don't know what Bartimaeus looked like. We don't have a picture of him. I'm using this picture to represent first Bartimaeus. But look at his eyes. Do those eyes... 
into those eyes cause you to want to make a difference in your life? What if those eyes were the eyes of Jesus? What if Jesus, what if that was a picture of Jesus? We don't have a picture of him, but what if that was a picture of Jesus and he was looking straight at you? You remember when Peter denied the Lord? And Luke records that at that final moment of that last denial, what happens? Jesus turns and looks at him. You talk about a look that would just melt anybody. That was a look. Because Peter knew what he had done. To not look at the eyes and think to yourself, can I be a world changer? And I'm ready to do that. If there's anything we can do to help you, please come forward as we stand and sing for your encouragement.